Welcome back. My name is Thomas and in exercise number three of problem set number three we want to practice how to construct symmetry adapted vectors as a basis for representations. We want to find a basis for the tau representation of C2v and C3v and we want to find a basis for the Borg cube representation of C4v. This must be nothing new to you because this is thoroughly discussed in exercise sheet number two. The only thing new is the projector operator right here, defined as in the lecture. We take the dimension of the irreducible representation times the average over the character times the symmetry operation. And we, and if, when we act with this operator onto a trial vector, which we can choose arbitrarily, we will end up with a vector with a basis vector which transforms according to the ith re irreducible representation. We can only do that with the irreducible representation. That's, that's the reason why I wrote the irreducible decomposition of the tower representation and the Borg cube representation already done. We can construct the trial vector arbitrarily and for the simplicity we start off by taking the trial vector which contains 1 as every point of uh, the vector. And we act with the, the uh, projector of the first irreducible representation on this vector and see how it transforms. Please be reminded that every coordinate represents the value of a the distinct point in the graph uh, of the symmetry group so when we act with this on with this operator onto this vector uh, we end up by taking the identity where nothing happens plus because the character is plus plus the c2 rotation and if we return 1 to 3 or 2 to 4 or just as we did with the other points, this leaves this vector intact as well. And that's why we have for all symmetry operations of uh, C to V the same vector. And that's the reason why this vector is the basis vector for our identity representation. Let's take a different example. Um, let's take the example of the inversion representation right here and we take the vector where only one has a value and the other one are at zero. So how, that this, how, how does this vector perform under the uh, projection operation of A2? Of course the identity element is left invariant. Then we have a minus, we have a plus one and we rotate by one half. That means this one right here ends up over here. That's why we have one zeros and then one one at position three. Now we have minuses for the mirror elements and the first mirror element is the uh, mirror plane X. So one ends up at position four and at when we mirror in the on the y-axis one ends up at position 2. So this vector is proportional to uh, let's see 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and this is a basis for a2. Let's do the same for a3 and for simplicity we take the same trial vector. All we have to do now is change signs according to our character table because the vectors transform equivalently to the uh, symmetry operations. So the first vector we have a plus, then we have a minus, then we have a plus, then we have a minus. So this plus is this plus, this minus is this minus, this plus is this plus, and this minus is this minus, and that, this is B1, I'm sorry, and this leaves us with a uh, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. And we can do the same for B2, which yields 
1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So our basis for the tower representation is the basis for all four irreducible representations of the C to V group. These basis vectors are this vector, this vector, this vector, and this vector. Let's do it a little quicker for the next one. So we act again with the, the projection operator of the identity representation on a vector uh, which is always 1. This yields again with the same calculation as above that this vector is indeed the basis for the identity representation. Now let's move on to the E representation. We take again the vector which is 1 at position 1 and see how it transforms. We take 2 times the identity and then we take again here the here's the character minus 1 minus the rotation in one direction which moves the one to the bottom and the other rotation to the other direction where the one moves over here. So we see that this is proportional to 2 minus 1 minus 1. Now we know from the lecture that if we act with a different symmetry operation, let's take C3, on that vector we end up with the linear independent vector and this is the second basis vector and you can see that it's always rotated again one third. So this and this are our basis vector with again with the identity basis vector for our tower representation of C3V. Let's move on to the Borg cube representation. Again you might imagine the basis vector for the identity representation is again the uh, vector which contains only ones and this is indeed correct and now we can now we can check what happens for the delta 5 representation we check it with the uh, vector which uh, with the same vector we checked it over here we check it with the vector which has a 1 at position 1 and zeros at the other positions so this is proportional to 2 times the identity 2 times 1 0 0 here we have 0, so nothing happens, then we have minus 2 times a rotation of 2. Now it's the first thing from what we know from exercise number 8 of problem sheet number 2, that the matrix uh, which transforms a vector according to C2 looks like this. We computed that in the previous exercise sheet. So we transform this vector according to this matrix, which gives us uh, let's see, minus 1, 0, 0. And now we have the character of this is minus 2. And this leaves us with a vector proportional to 1, 0, 0. Now we can act again with a different vector on it. We call, we name, uh, we, we take a different matrix right here. I selected sigma xy and we act with sigma xy onto that basis vector and this yields us uh, the second basis vector namely 0 1 0 and now we found all three basis vectors which span the board cube representation. Thank you for watching I hope this wasn't too fast because most of it was what you already know if you don't quite remember that, please go back to the previous videos and look it up. Especially the matrices for the Borg cube representation might seem a little unclear from this point of view, but that's actually pretty easy to find out. I suggest watching exercise number 8, problem set number 2, if this is unclear to you. Thank you for watching, see you next time.